Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news. And it's 1999 because it's 21 years today that Manchester United won that famous Solskjaer-inspired treble. The biggest ever achievement in English football and we own it. And it is historic, but you know what? There is no football at the moment, so we're going to... We're going to party like it's 1999. Link in the video description if you want to get a t-shirt, by the way. But let's talk about Solskjaer for a moment because he has got a very big transfer decision to make this summer. There's no doubt that Jadon Sancho is the number one priority and there is no doubt that the drop-off from Sancho, if we don't get him, is huge. Uh, we'll be talking about a player from Valencia that United are apparently interested in, but you know Brooks, you know Rabi Matundo, these are not Jadon Sancho quality players and there's big pressure on Solskjaer and United to make sure that they get Sancho in because to me that will be the difference next season between firmly being in the top four and battling for fourth and fifth again. But another big position that we're going to talk about to start off today and we will be talking about some players that sort of play around there as well is the striker position. Agarlo looking like he's going to go, but if he doesn't go, he will go after this nine games that we've got to play anyway. So there's going to be a void that is very clear to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that we need to fill. Now, some of you would say, well, we don't need a striker because we've got Martial, we've got Rashford, we get Sancho, and then we've got Greenwood. That's enough. It's not enough. It's not enough because if Rashford or Martial gets injured or both get injured, Who's going to play? Greenwood's going to shoulder the 30, 40 goals a season that we get from Rashford and Martial. That is not what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan is either. He wanted Haaland in, this, in January to add to what he's got. And he got Agarlo. And he will want another striker. And who will he get when Agarlo goes is going to be a very big thing as to how United grow over the next couple of years. Now, Agarlo looking like he's going to go back before the start of this new, this, the end of this new season. But even if he doesn't, he, he will go back before the start of next season because we're not going to pay £20 million for him and we're certainly not going to pay those wages. So Agarlo was always what Agarlo is, a short-term gap. What will Solskjaer look for as a replacement for Agarlo? Will he go for what he was originally trying to get, Erling Haaland, who, let's be honest, is one of the best strikers in the world? Or will he wander towards the Josh Kings, the Callum Wilsons of this world? Somebody who ultimately is not really good enough but takes a spot on the bench. And that will be a very key decision for United. But let's not underestimate it. We do need a striker to come in this summer as well as a Sancho and as well as maybe a midfielder as well. But as lots of as well. But we do, we definitely do need a striker. And in, and in that sense, there are a lot available. Muzzard Dembele is available from Lyon. Whether those links to him and us are strong, he is available. Timo Werner is available. Raul Jimenez is available. There are, Josh King is available. There are a lot of strikers available. And the one that Manchester United pick is going to be really important. And look, Josh King, Bournemouth, nearly came to United in January. They wanted 30 million quid. That might come down a little bit in the summer to 20 or 25, but you're going to get Musa Dembele for 40. You're going to get Werner for 50. You're going to get Raul Jimenez for 40. The difference between a Raul Jimenez, a Musa Dembele and a Timo Werner to a Josh King, who again is doing the same thing. It's my dream to come back to Manchester United. I'm sorry, I don't want players to come to Manchester United because it's their dream to come back to Manchester United. I want players to come to Manchester United because they're better than what we've got. And if it's your dream to play for United, great. But realistically, the definer here needs to be the talent. And where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to look at is going to be very interesting because we will be bringing a striker in. And that's going to be very interesting. Cavani, Lekip has, been, has said that Cavani has kept his options open. This was coming in over the weekend. We know that Cavani will leave PSG. We know that he was close to Atletico Madrid. There's talk of Newcastle. There's talk of United again. He will be moving in the summer and he is keeping his options open at this point, which means he's going to listen to the options and he's going to go with the one that's financially best for him. United could enter the race for Cavani. I think the thing about Cavani is, does he want to go to another club and sit on the bench like he has at PSG? I would avoid Cavani. I think he's had a lot of injuries over the last 18 months. I think he's a quality player, but he's never played in the Premier League and he's 32 It's a, and he'd be very expensive. So expense, injury record, age, never played in the Premier League. That would rule me out of a Cavani deal. Dybala has been talking over the weekend. There's talk of a Dybala swap for Pogba. Um, look, he snubbed us last summer. It was open that he snubbed us last summer. Why would you go back? Why would he change his mind? But why would we go back for a player like that? And as I've said about Dybala... I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dybala. He's a very, very good player. But I, I would not be confident of him succeeding at Manchester United. I think he is a, an in-and-out player. Um, in that sense, I mean, he can be out of a game for 80 minutes and then 10 minutes he's good. 
which is great and it works. But it, would it work for Manchester United and would it work, work in the Premier League? Can you have a player who's out of the game for 60, 70 minutes and then produces something in 10 minutes and then he's out of the game for the final 20 minutes? It sounds good and you sound like you go, yeah, but you know what the intensity of a Manchester United game or a Premier League game is. You need players that are involved in the game, not flitting in and out of it. And Dybala, I don't think, would suit the intensity of the Premier League and certainly not for a swap for Pogba. So look, if Dybala doesn't want to come to United, I can I can deal with that. And I, and I wouldn't be looking at doing a deal like that. And also, he, he sort of operates in the area that you want Bruno to be offering anyway. So I wouldn't be looking at that one. Ferran Torres is interesting. This would be... This would be if we didn't get Sancho. So this is, he plays for Valencia, very exciting. I think he's 20 years of age, quick, skillful. A lot of people are interested in him. I mean, D Dortmund were interested in him as a replacement for Sancho. So that's why I sort of knew about Torres uh, in, in extensively a few weeks ago. Now, Athletic and a couple of other people are saying that United have scouted him, United are looking at him. There's no doubting that Ferran Torres is a very good player. But I don't see United... Well, I think if we can't get Sancho, we might go down that route. He's out of contract in a year's time. Valencia probably are a club that's going to have to make some money in the summer. So there is a, there is a bargain player to get there. I mean, look, dreams, bit of Gabriel can come true. I mean, look, I really do like the idea. Um, and just, 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 just a little bit of pop trivia there. Gabriel used to wear an eye patch because I think she had... Uh, um, Actually, I don't know the answer. If anyone knows why Gabrielle wore an eye patch, I think it was something to do with being blind in one eye, but I wouldn't like to spread that rumour if it's not true. Um, I always quite liked it. Quite fancy grab Gabrielle when I was growing up. I, I, was, I was quite young. Um, but uh, people are going, who's Gabrielle? They'll be thinking I'm talking about a striker. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not buying a, a striker with an eye patch. We are looking at um, Ferran Torres. And yeah, I mean, look, Dreams can come true. How about we get Sancho and Ferran Torres because he's out of contract in a year and he's a talented player. I'd like to get both. Um, that would probably be a stretch beyond the imagination of anything United would want to spend. But he would be... What I would say about Ferran Torres in the limited times I've seen him, but the, in relation to the status that he's got and what he's been doing, he would be a better signing than a, than a Brooks or a, a Rabi Matundo, who for me, there's, so, there's a lot of potential there, but could they do it at Manchester United? I think Ferran Torres has got that star quality that he's going to step up from Valencia to a big club and do well. I don't think I don't think Brooks from Bournemouth or Rabi Matunde from Schalke are going to step up to Manchester United and do great. They might do, but I, I think there's more with Ferran Torres. So it's one to keep an eye on, but it's one of those ones that we don't really get excited about because we're like, yeah, he's a Sancho alternative. We want Sancho. And, and I think there's always an interest as to who a Sancho alternative could be, but we don't really want one, if that makes sense. Um... Also, we spoke about Cavani, we spoke about Fran Torres, uh, we spoke about Dybalo. Um On the Premier League in, in, in general, quite interesting this, Premier League in general tomorrow, as I said last night, we'll be meet, meeting tomorrow to vote about doing full contact training and potentially get a date for the Premier League to return. Now, we have had concerns over the last week about people such as Troy Deeney and, uh, and Galo Kante and a few others who haven't returned to training because of the safety concerns. Now, there was reports last night that the Premier League and clubs have held meetings with some of these players and there is a positive feeling that they will come back to training now that their safety concerns have been allayed. And, and this is good news. And it's nothing against those players making a stand. I think we all said it was disappointed they were making a stand, but we understood it because they're doing it for their own safety concerns and fo football would just have to carry on without them. I think that these conversations have gone and, and been had now that many of us have been discussing that this job is going to be the safest job in the world, in the country. You're going to get tested so much. You're putting yourself more at risk opening the door to the postman than you are training in a Premier League club when you're being tested and nobody's got it. So it's about allaying those concerns and hopefully Watford will get Deeney and Co back and, and, and Chelsea will get Kante because you want everyone to get what they've got. But I think time was always going to be the key with this. I think when it started being discussed two or three weeks ago, a lot of people are dying, a lot of people are still getting the disease, uh, the virus, and people are like, wow, you can't have football back. Quite, quite rightly in their mind, because they're living in that moment. But here we are, two and a half weeks later, we're still three or four weeks off the Premier League returning, and, 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 and here we are now, you've got you know people having barbecues, people off down the beach, rightly or wrongly. It's changed from where we were two weeks ago and it will change again in two weeks and it will change again in four weeks when the Premier League's meant to be coming back. So it's just a natural changing of, of time in this easing of lockdown. And of course, of course, I put my hand up, if, if we get an, a high infection rate and a, and, a, and a double dip or a second spike, that will be the end of the Premier League and we'll have to sit back and watch the Bundesliga and everybody else. But at the moment, it's looking um, in a good situation. That reminds me, 
Borussia Dortmund against Bayern Munich, half past five UK time today. You can join me, Mark Goldbridge, that's football, for a watch along. I've dropped a link in the video description for you for that. The live comments are already open and I'll be live at around five o'clock, but we'll have a watch along for you for that. I'm very excited about that. It's a big game. It's, a, it's probably the biggest game we've had in three months, isn't it? So I'm looking forward to that. If you're going to watch it, join me for the watch along. I'm Mark Goldbridge, that's football. The link's in the video description. And remember, I'll show you this. I'll show you this. Let me show you. Links in the video description for our t-shirt collection. Obviously, we've got the Martial ones out, the Bruno ones out. But one you might want to take a look at today, because it's 21 years today, is the one that I'm wearing right now. And let me show you. Um, we do ship worldwide. It is available in different colours. You can get it in eggplant. I don't know what colour that is. It's like a purple colour. You can get it in navy. You can get it in white. You can get it in grey. I've got it in black, and as you can see, that's the that's the design on it. Uh, tonight, I'm going to party like it's 1999 with a Premier League, an FA Cup, and a European Cup in the in the holes of the nine, and that's what I'm wearing for you right now. And you can get one. Link in the video description. Cracking classic T-shirt, rocking it on the anniversary, but you can rock it any day. Thanks everyone for watching. Links in the video description for the t-shirts. Smash a like on the video and I'll see you at half five on the watch along if you're going to join me for that. Links in the video description if you've not subscribed to that channel or you want to know something about it. Have a good day and I'll speak to you all soon.